I thought you were a bobcat. Oh, hey, honey. Oh, hi. What's going on? Good timing. Um, so there may or may not be something very strange in here right now. Um, I, I uh, honestly... Excuse me? I don't know what's going on. What are you doing? I don't know. I don't know what's going on. That's the thing I saw the other night. Take it out of our house. It's like a bob... I, it just came in the door. <laughs> You're I, allergic to cats. I know, but look at it. What is it? It's what a the, house cat. What it the, has a tag on it. But, Wait, it's going up to our room. It's what a, kind of cat is that? It's just a house Have cat. Have you ever seen a cat with those kind of stripes? Why do you think it's a bobcat? It looks like, look Look at the stripes on that thing. Okay, first of all, it could have fleas, and you just invited it into our house. It could have magical powers. Look at the daggum. Knowing that, the Rackleys, it's got a disease. Oh my goodness. What the heck is going on? Kitty cat, you're really cool looking. Okay. I, I just, we need to get you back to your own. No! It's, it's going feral, babe. I'm telling you, it was like running around the neighborhood. It was sitting under our bird feeder waiting for the doves to come in. I mean, it looks like a lynx or something. Look at the stripes. I've never seen such a thing. I'm allergic to you. Maybe I'm not because you're mystical looking. You're not like a normal house Honestly, cat. it looks like the cat that I used to have growing up. No way. That thing looks like a jaguar or a <laughs> leopard. Look at it. Are you not sneezing? No. Uh, no, no, I hear it. I hear it. You sound all congested. I, nasally? I've been nasally. <laughs> Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Uh, this is probably one of the weirdest intros I've ever had. I got out the camera to film this thing because I was like, whoa, that's that weird cat I saw the other night. And I was like, it's kind of small. It doesn't have a bobtail. But whoa, hey, that is my desk, sir. Indigo, whatever your name is. That's a cool cat. I'm not a cat person. I don't like cats, but... That thing looks like it's ready to hunt. How your cat, um, if you're missing a cat named Indigo, your cat's been wandering around our property and it kind of wandered into our house. <laughs> that was the weirdest phone call I think I've ever made. We have your cat. <laughs> we have your cat, it wandered into our house. I don't want to touch it when it's on the bed. <laughs> yeah. Grab it. I don't I can't grab, grab it, I'm it. allergic. It's gonna bite me. <laughs> it looks fierce. Hey, can you get off? Excuse me. Look at those Stop. Back stripes. Stop. Stop. Can, can you get off? I'm gonna move you. If it starts hissing at me, I'm gonna freak out. We're, we're gonna get you back to your owner, get don't worry. Get off the bed, please. <coughs> off the bed. Okay, we're gonna go return uh, the cat and then we're gonna continue our vlog for the day. This is, uh, this quite, is very strange. I'm not used is, to holding a cat. <laughs> this is quite the thing here. <coughs> yeah. We don't need you around because we we got chickens, we got doves, so see you later. When I came home the other night from getting the truck, I turned on uh, my lights again and that thing was sitting there and it came by so fast and it hid. I thought it was a bobcat because it just had the weird stripes, but I was like, it's kind of small and I think it had a long tail. I don't know. What kind of cat is that? Anyway, there it was, sitting under the bird feeder, waiting for the, actually there was already doves down there, so I guess it wanted to eat them, you know, have a little fun. Carpenter ants, millworms, look at those things. You put, you put that little millworm on a hook, you think that's not gonna get shift shanked by a daggum bug eyed crappie down there? Well, I know where to find some bait in the winter. Why am I chopping wood, you may ask. Well, I do a lot of chopping of wood actually here because I have so many trees. They grow, they die, they turn into firewood. That's just how things work. And currently, we have a lot of inventory. And let me catch you guys up on what we're doing here with the chicken coop because I have been working on it. And phase one, phase one has been basically building up the next section. We went up 24 to 28 inches around the sides, just depending on 
uh, where it is. So we got essentially another two feet. So that puts it up to around six foot, a little over six foot and some spots. Supposedly eight foot is like fox, not fox proof, but fox preventative. We're gonna go six foot and then we're gonna do electrical wire around the top to shock those raccoons, foxes, bobcats, crazy cats, whatever is coming in to get our chickens. So if you come over here, I've already added, I've added some, uh, some another two foot of the fence to the Rackley Roost here just to see how it's gonna look. It's gonna fare well. Problem is this pine stands out tremendously like with our house. Our house is a like a dark cedar. So I thought I might just stain it, you know, do it upright. I want these chickens to be looking good, feeling good, making the bestesses of eggs. And when I started staining it, I realized this is really hard to stain with the fence already on there. So I need a sprayer and my buddy Lance has a sprayer. Buddy Lance is a camper. Campers need firewood. Therefore, I'm chopping logs for him so he can have some firewood on his next camping dangling adventure and I can borrow his sprayer to finish putting this beautiful pecan color on the treated pine that I bought. So phase one, additional fortification and staining. And then we're gonna be doing electrical fence in phase two. That's gonna be a whole mess. Phase three, new chicken. Well, no, phase three actually is gonna be we're gonna get some new chickens, put them in here, and then phase four and five and beyond is really building a new uh, hen house for them. That one can do, that one's fine for like four, but if we wanna add uh, more, uh, it's all good. And you know what? Chickens are phenomenal little predators. So take all these little worms and ants, look at these carpenter ants that are all up in this wood. That's what eat wooden houses. Don't want them around. Run some chickens around, they'll scarf every one of those suckers. Our next mission is to go find some Christmas trees. It is almost trash day. People are gonna be putting those Christmas trees out. And when free Christmas trees become available to the public, the crappie dangler in me says, I need them so I can go set up some piles. And really bass too. You know, little cypress trees, things like that, that have good branch, small branches to them that little bait fish can get in. Uh, they, they make great brush piles, uh, especially for crappie. And since now that we've got the crispy collector, we can take a bunch of trees out there and not have to worry about messing up the silver bullet. And um, the ranch that we've fished a few times, I've hunted at, uh, it has a dedicated crappie pond with like no cover in it. So they asked if I would help them set up some brush piles out there and 100% that's what we are going to do. But we're gonna mount up in the new Silverado while wow, we don't have a camper on it because we're gonna get a camper put on here very soon. That's blockage of roof space. So we'll throw some trees in here and get them ready for the pond. And also, I wanna show y'all something really cool that I got from my dad for Christmas. He found me a vice, an old vice, and not just any vice, it's a Wilton vice. I needed a vice for the old dangle cave here. I still, I'm still looking for a, uh, an old school wood vise that I'm going to put over here on this table. So this one's flush and I can clamp down a, a vise right here. It goes straight to the table on the side rather than on top. With the old Wilton over here, it's just a classic piece of America. Every working garage needs a good vise. And now I've got a good one and a cool one. Kind of a story piece at the same time. And old Pops got me a Megalodon tooth for Christmas as well. Big fatty. So two really cool gifts. Shout out to LFD. Thank you very much. Okay, another update on the truck. Full blown 21 foot bass boat towing. 180.8 miles, 13.8 average. And my average speed during that was probably like 70. It's doing 75 on the highway. So it came down a little bit actually, going both ways. It was like 14.8. So honestly, not much better than my Tundra was, but still better overall with boat and not boat towing. So it's good news. Looks like we got a Brutus Spruce over here. <laughs> oh yes, I did end up finding me a Christmas tree. So we got one, there's more. We're in a, we're in a good neighborhood. 
I love the fresh smell of pine. I'm just your friendly neighborhood Christmas tree collector, trying to make the aquatic environment a better place for all species. I needed to make a quick stop here at LFD's for a push pole. A push pole that I've had since like the first year I started guiding. So this thing is really old. And up here I see a leg of what I am looking for. And right there is a big old tasty striper. Mm. Come here, come here. Oh, don't fall off me. Oh shoot. I managed to only find half of my push pole. Which, you know, doesn't do me a whole lot of good. It's half as good. But it's really bugging me. That's a special pole. You're in the dark. Let me enlighten you. I've had that pole a long time. It's a special pole. Sentimental pole. Now I just need to go pick up Emmy and get some tackle ready. Oh wait, there's a big, big daggum tree right here. Man, everything is tougher with the little baby, especially the little Emmy. Gotta take some of the grime off these puppies, y'all. You know, I've always used just this simple rim oil stuff I've cleaned my guns with to uh, quickly get in there and remove dirt and stuff. It's like a quick maintenance. It's weird in Texas and Florida and places like that, we get fishing year round. The fishing just continues and uh, my stuff gets really nasty and I put it into the ringer. You still need to put a good lube and oil your, your equipment properly so it keeps treating you good. And one thing that I got that I'm trying that's new this year that I use on my knives is this stuff called uh, Tough Glide. God, it smells like the Devil's undercarriage, but supposedly this stuff is uh, is really good. A lot of people use it on their on their gun slides, and pistols, a lot of different actions. I'm gonna throw some 17 pound fluoro on there and probably do a little grass fishing tomorrow. Just go ahead and put some fresh line on your reel. It just makes everything feel nice. You can go out there and cast in the morning, no backlash. It's good. Gosh. Right there, just a one. No halvesies, no three quotas, no three sixteenths, five sixteenths, all that gooky gaunt nonsense. This is El Jefe with the extra strong hook on that. So that's going on. The big pole with 65 pound braid, gonna be doing a little punching tomorrow and throwing big stuff and going braid, I go Palmar. Whatever bass eats that, I feel sorry for. Cause that is, whew, that is mass inertia going into your face. Probably gonna be a banger. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss that interesting method. I get a little excited about tackle prep, y'all. Especially in the, in the new year. New opportunities. I have yet to catch a largemouth in the new year. I've had smallmouth, I've had a little tiny strapper, had a little bit of white bass. Uh, my dad caught a drum. That was my first trip out, and now I'm ready to, to hit it on some largies. Wah bam, that is a pretty little thing right there. Okay, all I think that is gonna do it for today's odd vlog. Started out with an odd cat coming into my home. I gathered some Christmas trees, I cut some wood, you know, basically just did some homesteading items, and now I'm ready to dangle. I've done all my preparations. I'm gonna keep it pretty simple tomorrow. Just give them the meat and taters and then yank on them. If you wanna stay tuned for tomorrow's dangle, all you gotta do is hit the subscribe button and hopefully YouTube will send you a notification, but you never can be too sure these days. I'm gonna get in my big cozy bed, dream of the big bass of tomorrow. God bless you. I'll see you soon.